A girl giggles and jumps on the bed face down. She hops on the bed wearing minimum clothing, and so do two other men in their underpants. A voiceover talks about Christina, who never thought she'd leave Los Angeles. But now she is in Paris, making the best of her jet lag, with Nick and Mark by her side. This will probably be the last time something like this happens. The triad drink and cheer together before including the element of venereal in their arrangement. Mark came to Los Angeles to attend meetings on behalf of his father, a famous Italian actor. He loved the city, so he grabbed the opportunity when he was presented with it. His life is all about good times. Mark goes about the city, taking pictures. He sits alone at a bar and looks around. The women sitting next to him smile at him. It is the next morning. Mark talks to his dad on the phone while one of the girls from last night at the bar sleeps in his bed. His father reminds him of all the meetings he needs to attend that day. The girl wakes up and starts dressing. Mark soon disconnects the call saying he'll call him back in a bit. She says she has a busy day ahead and wishes him good luck. Mark is mesmerized by the girl and barely listens to what she says. But he doesn't forget to wish her the best. The grin on his face doesn't go for a long time. The voiceover tells us that even though he has a life of leisure, in reality, he is running from an ex-girlfriend who won't let go. He gets ready and meets with the people he is supposed to. They present their idea about a reality show which would showcase a family to aspire to, since his father is an international star. The voice says his father's shadow always looms over him. Mark's expressions change because he fears that everyone expects him to be like his father. The team tells him that Mark will be the star, and they will have a micro-crew follow him and his family around. They ask if he will talk to his father about the show. A woman from the team is seen hugging Mark, indicating he's agreed to their idea. She tries to kiss him, but he pulls back a little while laughing it off. She casually makes a comment about his body and mentions working out. He drives to a harbor and gets a call from his dad asking him where he is because he's late for the next meeting. He argues with his dad, saying he's already been to four meetings since morning. He bursts as he starts describing how awful his experience has been since this morning, where he's been presented with really bad ideas and made castles in the air, promising he's going to be the next star. He's had enough of those ideas and enough of the free water bottles they've been handling out. He throws them into the dustbin and kicks it in frustration. He stands on the boardwalk and starts kicking the rails when Nick calls out to him. He sees an old version of himself in Mark. He knows how destructive those feelings can be. Nick is seen projecting his rage and practicing his attack moves. He grew up in Tehran with a French mother and an Iranian father. He was the only redhead in his school. To avoid bullies, he built a shell of strength around himself. Mark is much calmer now. He sits with Nick and laughs at his stupidity. Nick asks if he has ever surfed. He says no, and Nick says it is fun. He regrets living in Los Angeles for 10 years and never trying to surf. He has always been busy, and now he thinks it is too late for him to learn. Neither of the two heard the siren or saw the accident that was caused by a driver who was texting, clueless as to how one innocent decision could alter the rest of their lives. Nick talks about the nuances of fighting and says he is a black belt. Mark asks him if he would teach him, but Nick says no. He is supposed to board a flight to Iran in a few hours. He has been called back for an unspecified family emergency. He suspects it is his father's ploy to make him leave Los Angeles for good. Mark says his day has already been awful. So Nick refusing to teach him would it make a difference. Nick thinks about it and then smiles. Mark asks if it is a yes, and Nick says yes. Mark is ecstatic that finally, something good is happening. They decide to meet tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. at the same place. Nick was finding a reason to stay. He chose to miss his flight. He smiled at the thought of not leaving the place he called home. The next day, Nick starts training Mark. After the training, Mark pretends to tackle Nick but accidentally elbows him on the nose. They go to a nearby cafe and ask the waitress for some ice. Seeing Nick's bloody nose, she rushes to take out some ice. They whisper between themselves that she is cute. They ask for a napkin and Mark spills the ice cubes. The waitress helps them pick the cubes and smiles at the two handsome men. They smile at her. The owner intervenes and asks what is going on. Mark explains to him the situation. The owner asks the waitress, whose name is Christina, to attend her table. He then makes the two men leave to avoid getting his cafe any messier. They bid goodbye to Christina. She chuckles as they leave. Christina is a part of a protest against cruelty towards animals. She stands with a solemn expression with the message, having a wrong and trying to make it right. This message means the world to her. There have been many wrongs in her life. The recent one is her grandfather passing away. She was closest to him and still regrets leaving him at the nursing home to go to work that day. Christina finds the two of them sitting outside the cafe. She goes to them and says that it is common sense, not to stick around the place one just trashed and asks for their story. She teases them by asking them if their heads bumped while kissing, and Mark says yes, he kissed Nick with his fist. She asks them where they've come from. She easily guesses Mark has come from Italy. Mark asks if they got her fired since she is out before her shift. She says that would have been good, but she has to be somewhere. Christina doesn't reveal where she's headed and plays around for a while. She is curious to know if they will follow her blindly. Nick is willing to stay out the whole night to avoid sleeping on his friend's floor again. And Mark just wants to have a fun life. She asks if either of them has a car. Mark has a car, and the three head out. 
They introduce themselves to each other. First, she takes them to a place, and they climb the wooden elevator. She jokes about being an organ dealer. Mark seems a bit scared, but Nick remains unfazed. Mark says he can do away with a kidney, and Nick adds he has a heart condition, so they are out of luck. The place turns out to be an art gallery. Mark is impressed, while Nick playfully says that he knows her game plan. The galleries hire pretty girls like her to lure in customers. He adds he doesn't have money to buy any of the artwork. They discuss art, and Mark and Christina take sides as admirers of art. Nick doesn't quite understand art. The gallery had a blank space, and Christina gave them a pen each to write their greatest fear in the empty space. The writing doesn't show on the wall as they write. She usually gives her audience two experiences, one when they write their deepest fear. Once they're done, she asks them if they feel any better. Mark says a solid yes, while Nick says no. Then she reveals that everyone has fears. This is the second experience. She turns off the light, and all the writings, not just theirs but of many other people, appear on the wall in pink and blue neon colors. The men guess that she is the artist of that piece. She then takes them to the terrace. They look around, and Mark approaches Christina asking her why she chose fears as the topic of her art. She replies that everybody wants to get away from theirs, so she invented a way to do so. He says he loves the concept. Christina asks Nick about his fears, and he equates it to a boxing match between dreams and Los Angeles. Christina guesses he is an aspiring actor. He realizes how much he is going to miss Los Angeles once he is gone but doubts the city wouldn't notice he was gone. The trio then goes to a bar. Mark boasts about Italians being the best lovers. Nick counters it by saying the French are more sensual. The debate leads to harmless bickering between the two men. Christina, however, gets to test them both by sharing a kiss with each of them. In the end, all three agree to call it even. Both Italians and French are equal. They run towards the beach, like a free bird soaring in the sky. Even though it is cold, Christina challenges them to a skinny dip in the ocean. Mark and Nick accept the challenge and jump into the cold water after removing their clothes. They return to their car to warm up, and Christina takes out her camera to capture the moment. The camera was her grandfather's. She tells them that anytime she wants to share something with him, she'll just take a picture. She tells them he passed away a week ago. Nick apologizes, and Mark says he is glad that this is a moment she wants to share with him. She says she wants him to know she's doing fine. She also discloses he was Italian and taught her how to speak Italian, bringing a broad smile to Mark's face. She says they're having a reception for him the next day. Mark changes the topic to lighten the mood and asks her to take the picture. He then shows his biceps, saying she should show her grandpa how safe she is with two warriors protecting her. She laughs and clicks many photographs. Christina and Mark have dosed off in the car. Nick stays awake. He has gotten dozens of calls and texts from his father because his flight landed in Iran without him. He walks on the beach, thinking what reason he would give his father. The next morning, they drop Christina at the cafe. They bid her goodbye. Mark is back at his apartment. He smiles, thinking about all the fun he had yesterday and the people he has met. His phone rings, and his smile disappears. It is his dad again. He sounds angry because Mark is not at the lunch meeting he was supposed to be. Mark now remembers and quickly makes his way to the location of the meeting. He parks his car, and is about to get down when he finds a tag. Christina must have left it there. He smiles and starts the engine. He makes his way to the location Christina mentioned a day before, and arrives at Christina's grandfather's memorial service. Christina is alone with the pianist in a room full of empty chairs. She is really happy to see Mark and hugs him tightly upon seeing him. He shows her the tag and says she left it in his car. Behind him stands Nick. She is beyond ecstatic. She asks them if they plan this. They laugh and say no. Slowly many people come to attend the memorial. Christina is overjoyed and meets everybody. Nick and Mark place their arms around her to let her know she is not alone. But they had no idea Christina lived in her grandfather's nursing home. Every night she sneaked in and slept under his bed. The nurses there thought it was sweet but also sad. Now that her grandfather was gone, she was handed her belongings. She admitted that she has been sleeping at an all-night Korean spa. They charged her $35 from midnight to 5 a.m. She's riding with the guys. Nick would like to know about the place because he can no longer stay with his friend. So, Mark took them in, using his dad's credit card to pay for them. He takes them to his apartment. For Nick, doubts about being inadequate slowly creep in, and he wonders what he got himself into as he unpacks. But he decides to go along with it for now. Mark is happy he is utilizing his father's money to help the people who deserve it. Christina unpacks her things in a dozen film rolls. She looks in the mirror and feels free of her woes. She feels the universe is looking out for her. Nick calls some of his old clients to try his luck in making an earning by taking up gigs. But till now, luck doesn't seem to favor him. Mark clicks selfies with the two of them and the pizza they've ordered. They share a smoke, and Christina impishly asks Mark if he is sending it to his girlfriend. Mark says he doesn't have a girlfriend. Christina and Nick laugh as they do not believe him. So Mark tells them the selfie was for his followers. When asked how many followers he has, he replies 500,000, leaving Nick and Christina baffled. They ask him who he is and if he is a big deal in Italy. He explains that he is the son of a soap opera superstar in Italy. Christina and Mark stay up and talk while Nick has fallen asleep. 
Christina asks him if he has ever thought of becoming an actor. Guark says it is not his thing. He hasn't figured out what he really wants to do in life. Christina is supportive of him and says it is okay. He is here in Los Angeles and what is important is he's gaining experience. Mark smiles and says he likes the experience here. He lightly touches Christina's arm, and she smiles at him. They soon start necking, but before things could escalate, Christina stops and says not yet. She wishes him goodnight and goes to her room. Nick wakes up for a second and asks what he missed. Mark says not much and hands Nick his shirt. He then lays back on the couch. Nick takes Mark's shirt and wraps it around himself, while murmuring he's lucky to have a soap opera superstar shirt. Once Mark is in deep slumber, Nick calls his dad and apologizes for missing the plane. He says he was busy, so he couldn't call before. He says he would have come, but he met some friends. His father pushes him to come back, but Nick asks him to enjoy every moment. After the call, for a very long time, Nick stays awake and thinks about his conversation with his dad. The next day, Christina takes the guys to experience Joshua Tree with her. At this place, Christina's grandfather helped his friend Alessandro build a campground among art installations. As they walk to a structure, they meet Alessandro, who greets Christina with an embrace. They walk to a boat on the barren land. The guys are impressed. Christina explains the place as a different plane of consciousness. They sit on the edge of the boat, looking around. Each one of them empathizes with the boat differently. Mark relates to it as adrift but adventurous. Nick sees it as out of place and lost on its journey. Christina believes the boat could be Noah's Ark, where all the people she's truly loved, living or dead, could be together forever. Christina clicks a few pictures from up there. The three then rest on a big barrel-shaped bed with cushions and only the outer rings attached. They laugh at some saying Nick's dad told him about the sun in the sky, but he can't recall Call it. They walk to a higher point in the evening and watch the sun go down. They will be staying for the night at the campsite. They gather around the bonfire, and Christina proposes they play a game. The rules are simple. Each one of them will ask a question, and the other two have to answer it honestly. Christina starts and asks them about the last girl they have been with. Mark laughs as Christina and Nick look at him. They say he's more like a player, so they're intrigued to know. The game soon gets boring. Christina plays some music and starts dancing. Mark joins in, and they make Nick join in too. Things escalate, and the three end up acting on their cardinal instincts to be with each other and explore their innermost desires. The next morning, Mark and Nick are still sleeping when the sun rises. They open their eyes just a little and smile at each other. Christina is with Alessandro, who is cooking breakfast. She says she wants to keep them around, referring to Mark and Nick. Alessandro thinks it is a great idea. Before they went back, Alessandro gathered them and delivered a speech, wishing them to be together for the rest of their lives and share love and joy. He makes it sound like a minister officiating a wedding. At the end of his speech, he asks them to kiss each other to strengthen the bond. They all cheer and then kiss each other. The newfound love among these lovers marks a new journey for them, filled with support and no judgment. Mark gets a call from his mother, who tells him about a girl who keeps approaching them as she is pregnant with Mark's child. Mark entrusts his mother to take care of the girl and pay her to send her away. The trio reaches Mark's place and jumps on the bed. They consummate their eternal bond with each other. Together they explore the streets of Los Angeles, visiting the club and then trying to find their Uber. The driver ultimately cancels on them. The next morning, Nick makes breakfast, and Christina joins him in the kitchen. Mark is awake too, and the three prepare breakfast together. They talk over breakfast about their dreams. Nick says he wants to be wilder and be like, as one can describe, a primitive man. Christina clicks another picture to add to her memories. The political climate in Los Angeles was getting tense. The protests were going on for the rights of the immigrants, and Christina was surprised to see so many women out on the road protesting against the regime. Nick and Mark tagged along with Christina, but soon they got engulfed by the energy of the protesters, and they began to cheer too. They then go to the dog adoption center and meet Luna and Daisy, two rescued dogs. Every Sunday, Christina volunteered at the adoption center to walk dogs. Nick invites Seema to meet Christina and Mark. Nick tells them that Seema is like his mother because she took care of him. She asks if Christina is his girlfriend. He says no, which makes Christina's smile fade away a little. She brings him snacks and tells him his father misses him a lot. After Seema is gone, he sits alone in a daze. Christina is in the art gallery lying on the floor. Mark comes there and asks her what she is doing. She replies she is brainstorming. Mark walks in the opposite direction and lies on the floor so that his face faces hers. With a smile, she asks him what he is doing. He says he is supporting her storm. She feels at ease now and holds his hand as she closes her eyes again. Mark is happily riding a bicycle around his neighborhood. This time when his phone rings, he doesn't pick it up and continues riding. Christina brings home some plants she found abandoned near a nursery. She decorates the place with those plants. Nick is training with Mark. Mark asks if he ever competes. Nick says he had to choose between competing and acting, and he chose acting. Mark's mother stopped texting him, and he wondered if they had paid off the pregnant girl and sent her away. Nick started working as a ticket checker at a theater. Once home, he stares at nothing in particular and thinks. He then reads lines from a book and narrates them as if for an audience. He speaks to himself, looking in the mirror, and even cries, thinking about his dream for which he left everything. 
he makes a video call to his mother. He tells her dad had sent Seema to check on him. His mother says she heard something else, and Nick confesses he is in love with two people, and they all love each other and are staying in a flat together. His mother laughs and calls it a French cliché. He asks her if she has a problem with that. She says absolutely not. She just wants to see her baby happy and free. After disconnecting the call, Nick holds an expression of satisfaction on his face. Mark paces to and fro in panic. His father has cut his allowance and blocked his credit cards. Mark talks to him over the phone and says he can't do this. His father is upset with him because first, he created a mess back home, and now he doesn't want to go to the meetings either. So to teach him a lesson, his father uses this strategy. So Mark takes it upon himself to find a job. He goes to a cafe where Christina has made a recommendation for him. Everything seemed alright till he had to submit some documents that he did not possess. So the manager refuses to hire him. He had not anticipated this, but probably his father had. So Mark takes his revenge by going to the first client he attended and rejects their proposal of a reality show, saying his father didn't like the idea. With this lie, he breaks away from his father, ending all obligations his family put on him while he is in Los Angeles. Meanwhile, Christina is looking for inspiration for her next art installation, but has had no luck yet. Frustrated, she goes to Nick and shares an intimate moment. Afterward, they go to walk the dogs at the adoption center. Nick thought he'd feel good about being chosen by Christina without Mark in the picture, but he didn't feel that good about it. They are lazing around at the apartment when Mark gets a call from his mother, who tells her to come home. The girl he got pregnant refused to take the money and is demanding a paternity test. He will have to go home and prove the child is not his before it is born. He is frustrated and tells Christina and Nick what has happened. Turns out the girl in question is Mark's ex-girlfriend. He will have to leave soon. Hearing this brings a thought to Christina. She sits in the tub and gets an image of her running in front of a car to stop it. She wraps her hands around her stomach. Nick is upset too, at the uncertainty of what is going to happen. The three confine themselves into their own space to think about their past, present, and future. Mark cries as Nick holds him. He assures him everything will be alright. Christina lies in her bed, lost in thought. Faint sunlight comes in from the window, and there it is, a sign from the universe, the shadow of the love symbols on the wall. It stays there just for a few seconds before it disappears. But it was enough to ignite the fire in her to see the relationship through, to fight for it. Christina shares her plan with them. They will all go to Italy and help Mark get through the trouble. Mark kisses Christina, showing his gratitude to these wonderful two people he has found. He calls his mom and asks her to book three tickets to Italy. Together, they travel to Mark's home. People recognize Mark and the two get to know how big of a deal he is. Mark takes them to Puglia, the eastern coast of Italy, to his summer house. His parents are waiting for him. After introducing Christina and Nick, Ricardo holds Mark back to talk to his son privately while Claudia, Mark's mom, takes Christina and Nick inside. Mark had ruined everything he touched. Luckily, the mission was not important for Ricardo. He prioritized keeping the girl away from his son to save his future plans. Claudia shows Christina Mark's room and says she can stay there, while showing a door across the hall to Nick as his room. But to her shock, Nick says he'll be staying in the bedroom with the two. Claudia confronts Mark and asks him how he can be with someone who is with somebody else. Mark doesn't give an explanation. Together they all go to explore the town on their bicycles. Mark's ex-girlfriend lets him know when he has to be there for the test. Mark takes the two out to meet his friends. While Mark is busy meeting them and introducing Christina to them, Nick sits at a distance. He soon meets Naya, and they soon strike up a conversation. Naya works at a refugee welcome center. She enjoys helping people. She notices as Nick talks about himself and acting. She asks him if he can teach drama at the Welcome Center. He takes the opportunity and says yes. That night they are partying to forget all their obligations, even if it is just for one night. We are taken back to the first scene where they are jumping on the bed and partying. It is the next morning. Christina wakes up early and goes out in the streets after freshening up. She is happy to be in the land where her grandfather was born. She comes across an edicola, a religious display, and sees a picture of a deceased person. It hits her that her grandfather is never going to come back. No matter how many pictures she takes, thinking she is communicating with him, he is never coming back. While going for the paternity test, Mark is accompanied by his father. Mark says if the child is his, he is ready to take responsibility. But his father doesn't think so. He says he's not buying the girl's silence but Mark's freedom. Naya wishes everybody a good morning at the Welcome Center. She introduces Nick as an actor from Los Angeles and says that he is going to take their acting class. Nick begins with his favorite basic exercises. They may seem silly at first, but they really open them up and free their mind from everyday clutter. Naya seems impressed, but above all, the refugees will always remember Nick because he enabled them to pass their energy to others. At the end of the class, everyone seems to have enjoyed it. They clap with happy faces. Christina leans on a wall, lost in thought. Her grandfather had said when he's gone, he'll come back as a bird and guide her through. She spots a pigeon and follows it. Whatever the pigeon does next, she is set to perceive that as her next step in life. The pigeon walks for a little while and then flies off. Mark is tormenting himself with what to do, whether to convince his ex-girlfriend to take the money, 
or take up the child's responsibility. He feels all eyes are on him, judging him. He meets his ex, and she smiles when she sees him. He smiles too. She shows him her belly, and he gets up to hug her. She hugs him back, and he soon leaves. Nick practices punching in the air. He has a surge of emotions, excitement, nervousness, and hope for the future. He has found what was missing in his life as an actor, meaning. After taking a plunge into the sea, he sits and meditates. He sits on the roof, and Mark joins him. He asks Nick how his class was. Nick says it all came to him naturally. He felt free and happy, and it was great. Nick has made up his mind to go back to Iran and help the refugees there. He won't be going back to Los Angeles with Christina and Mark. He wants to make a difference with his life. He wants to give back. Mark hugs him and understands. Together they climb down the roof when the bells in the church start ringing. So much has happened in the hours the three were apart. Mark's paternity results came back. He is the father. Ricardo asks him what he has decided for himself. Fatherhood or freedom? Mark chose freedom. His father holds him and says he has great hopes for him. Christina asks Nick if he really has to go. He says he has to leave. Christina wants him to stay. Claudia is entertaining Christina and Nick with tarot cards. Mark gets a call, and he acts as if he got the call and the paternity results came out to be negative. Ironically, the card he got that Claudia pulled out from the deck indicated lies. The band played as they led the procession forward. That night was a procession of the Lady of Sorrows. Mary's statue toured the entire town until it was brought back to the church, her final resting place. Nick studied the statue and asked why Mary's mouth was made open by the artist. Christina didn't know the answer. Mark knew it represented the sorrow she felt at the loss of her son, but he chose not to answer. The next morning, Nick left for France to meet his mom before going back to Iran. It is said that the best aspect of a love between three is that if one leaves, the other two will have each other. But Mark doesn't know if Christina will stay with him in Italy. Once in France, Nick shares his plans with his mother. That night while having dinner in a crowded cafe, a car pulled up, and the cafe was under a shootout attack. The piercing screams of the people engulfed the rhythmic murmur of the evening. Nick lost his life in that tragic incident. Christina and Mark mourn their lover's death in their own ways. Mark's room has a painting of three people in a boat, which resembles Christina, Nick, and Mark. Christina clicks its picture to always remember the three sailed on the same boat. One year later, Mark stayed in Italy and joined his father's theater company in Rome. He is at his summer house, and while strolling on the balcony, the memories come flooding back to him of what had happened. It is in those quiet moments he gives in. Even now, Nick's voice rings in his ears, taunting him, asking him, show me what you got. Christina had come back to Los Angeles. At first, being alone in the city where it all started made her unbearably unhappy. But then she started cherishing the memories she had made with her lovers. And since the birth of her daughter, she has realized her daughter is the bridge between the earth and the sky. The earth holds her, and the sky holds Nick. 